Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, I think we went to the House of Days. I'm not quite sure because it's been about a week since I've played, since I've been sick. And this game requires a lot of talking, so I've been waiting for my voice to recover. It's, I don't know, like 75% recovered. It should be fine. Might be some coughing, though. I know this episode we need to... Uh, well, the first thing I'm doing is the stone court which is where i'm at right now I'm gonna deliver a bunch of gems there to the judge because they love gems and then i think they'll give me information on the industrialists wife's whereabouts something like that so that's the first order of business i want to show you something else first though i so far for the entirety of this game and honestly for all the other games i've ever played years and years in the past if i ever need to make a note of something and this game requires me to make a lot of notes because I have all the like character backstory stuff for Elizabeth and things like that. Anytime I've made a note, I've just done it in a loose doc file on my desktop, which is a real bad way to do it. It's not backed up anywhere. It's not very well organized. Usually I just leave it on my desktop until I have finished the game and enough time has gone by that I'm like, ah, I probably don't need that anymore. But I thought oh, there must be a better way to do this. There's, I've heard of note, like note taking applications that do stuff for taking notes. So I looked it up and I ended up settling on Microsoft OneNote. No, I'm not. I'm not sponsored by Microsoft, <laughs> but heard it was pretty good. I've started using it and it seems to work well. They've just created like a, a loose category for games and right now it's just sunless skies and i copied all the elizabeth's character sheet stuff and also a separate thing for a to-do list which actually has check boxes um i also made the background slightly pink and you can write in super gay rainbow um drawing color so it's nice it's really nice everything's like backed up instantly i can access it across multiple devices and edit the same files on my phone or on my computer. Just sort of like an FYI, if you're also making loose text files and have no system, this might be a good solution. And yes, Elizabeth is definitely gay. Part of their background is also, they're gay. One of the things on that to-do list, by the way, it was something that one of the commenters told me. They told me that once you visit all four regions, just have to have entered them, don't have to do anything in particular. Once you've visited all four regions, it gives you an extra... Um, forgot what it was called, but an extra thing that you can choose for a level up. Um, what are they called? Choose a facet. Ah, facets. Uh, must be far traveled. Yeah, um, I've been wanting to get a mirrors thing as my main skill for one of these. Because I want to get it as close to 75 as I can, so I have both veils and mirrors at 75. And I've been waiting on spending my last level because none of these have mirrors as their main skill. But they told me that this shows up when you travel in every region, and indeed it does, and it has mirrors as the main skill. So, heck yeah, far traveled. You've journeyed every corner of the heavens. Your accounts of your travels are in great demand. When your avid audience asks what the sky holds, what do you answer? Hmm, this will give me more veils. This will give me more hearts. God knows I could use the hearts. <laughs> right, so stat-wise, I'm going to say wonders because I want the hearts. But in reality, the actual answer for Elizabeth is terrors. Humanity was never invited to the heavens. You're intruders in a grand house and you've learned to tread carefully. That's the real answer. This one's just for stats. And that's... That's it. That's all my 20 levels. Game over. Thanks for watching. Bye. Um, what's our mirrors at? I think the mirrors that it displayed in the level up screen was taking into account all the bonuses from having other people. Yeah, I think so. So we're at 65. We need 10 more. I'm sure we can get that if we configure our people, right? It's not that much lower than my veils. My veils technically isn't 75 on its own. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, stone face court. Oh, you know what? Hold on. 
Before I do anything else, let's check that off my to-do list. Level up. Boop. Bird into the stone face court. Follow the curious official. There's the judge. Oh, we can get another port report. Let's do that. You sit down. Oh, I mean, I've already read this before. What's the point? Yeah, got one. Um, what does this do? Oh, right. You'll receive a testament of roses if you succeed in this. I should probably do this. It's good to have a testament of anything, right? Just at least one of everything. I'm sure will come in handy. Oh, buy your crew a few rounds of the tavern. This will reduce terror. That would be very good. <coughs> <coughs> the Stoneface Court boasts several breweries and provides a daily ration of beer for all the graven within its walls. Let's see how much it does. 37. Down to 32. That's not much. After a long day's work at the court, the graven gather here. To avoid spillage, most of them tip their drinks directly down their exposed throat, bypassing the mouth entirely. It's all vanity, one of the Graven drunkenly tells you. The sapphire king granted us an exception from the usual laws of death so we could carve the flesh off our faces and not die. <laughs> we try so hard to obscure the fact we're alive, but the tragedy of it is, the skulls don't fool anyone. Granted us an exemption from the usual laws of death so we could carve the flesh off our faces and not die. Oh my god, this sounds terrifying. So they're not actually undead, it's just... <clears throat> they're exempted from death and then they carve their faces. Hmm. Is that why the judge over here looks like this in the picture? And that, like, nasty bloody stump? Is it because they're also the graven and they carve the flesh off of their head and their neck? Holy shit. God. No. Spin my own soul for judgment. Await the ver- does that cost anything? Oh, right, it takes a moment of inspiration. That's fine. Yep, Testament of Roses. Oh, new total two. Oh, I thought I had zero. That's fine. Ask about the industrialist's lost love. Offer a tithe. Cask of Nefaratine gemstones. Just one, and I've got six on me. A lead. She examines each gemstone expertly. This changes everything, she says. I'll close the courtroom and get to work. Return at the end of the day. When you return, she's sitting before a book that's easily four times as tall as she is. The pages are cast from brittle clay, and a servile graven stands atop a precarious stepladder, turning them periodically. She holds up a hand as he finally reaches the correct page. The spirit you seek has been judged as dead, says the judge. She has moved on to death's door. If you're lucky, you can reach her before she passes on. Okay. Well, haven't found death's door yet. <coughs> I think that's all there is to do here, yeah. <clears throat> Was I going to do any of these prospects? White Will. Caged catches for the Forge of Souls. Well, we haven't found the Forge of Souls. We have found the White Will. Wait, for the White Will. Is it Wilmoth, probably? Where I would deliver them? Anyway, I don't have them on me, so whatever. Um, I think it's time to explore, then. We need to find some new places. Yeah, how am I doing on supplies? Six fuel, seven food, that's not great. Can I buy some here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they have... Oh, this is the place we deliver it to the White Well. Yeah, they have petrichor and fuel. Hmm. 
Buying Petrichor didn't actually make my supplies go up. Right? Yeah. But I know you can eat it, I think. So... How, how does that work? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it'll switch over to it after I run out of these? I, uh, that's scary. Okay. Yeah. Let's go this way and then head up clockwise. Around the edge. <coughs> Pardon the coughing. Those are flags. Looks like they were extending at me for a second. Hmm. Over here at Kerr, it looked kind of similar to what it looks like here, except it was all red. This one's all yellow. So... Persephonus. Yeah, they seem to be, like, common things. Maybe there's one for each type of Lagoy or something? Because I've seen a yellow Lagoy and I've seen a red Lagoy, which matches the two... ...these things that I've found so far. Uh-oh. Is that one of those fancy ships? Yes, it is. Where are you going? Right, they have homing rockets. God, that's so satisfying. Uh oh, shit. Taking a lot of damage. Ah. <clears throat> if I can heal myself, I would do it, but I can't. Otherworldly artifact or the engine's plundered hall, sure. Plundered hall, success. Selection of immaculate souls. After a thorough and rapacious search of the engine, you unearth a concealed chamber in the hold. Inside a battered and unpromising looking trunk. Have they already sold their cargo? Opening the... <laughs> opening the tunk? <laughs> it's meant to say trunk, but I, I like the word tunk. Opening the tunk, you find a collection of London-made jars, cheaply manufactured, but housing a collection of unparalleled souls. You collect up the souls to part the engine. Golden and terrible Lagoy of the Visitation guard these passes. Yeah, golden, just like Persephonus. be really thorough with my exploration of this place though because it's super important and it's pretty small 
so I'm not going to go straight there. Let's go back to the edge of the map. getting real choppy, weirdly enough. Is there something weird going on over here? Oh god. Uh... No. No, 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 no. I... Yeah, there's no way I can take two at the same time. Can I bait just, like, one out? they both lost me. Can I see one over here? Huh, I thought I saw one over here. Oh, there's one. They're still sticking together. Damn, that still hurt me. Got blasted by the AoE. Smoking, at least. Man, that was a terrible shot. What were you thinking? Yes, that was a lot of good damage. And they're still not on fire. Oh, oh, that was close. Oh, they just shot their buddy. Good. Shit, shit, shit. Oof. Ooh, 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 ooh. That is way too much damage. Holy shit. Uh oh, uh oh. Emergency. Fuck. 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 Mmm. I'm in trouble. <clears throat> well, they're blocking the way back, so I think I have to go forwards. All right. Oof. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh! Come on, I need some dis- Oh, shit. Fuck, I didn't even see that. Oh, wow. 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 Uh, hold on. Maybe strip her for repairs. Yes, that would be great. Oh, thank you. 16 hole. Fuck, is it? Oh my god, this is a dead end. It is a cove. I think coves are usually dead ends, huh? I think I'm gonna die. I don't think I can get out of this. Here we go. Shit, shit. Ah, oh, fuck. Wow. This is what, the third time I've died? Resume from last autosave. I have learned, don't even try to bait out two of the spear for engines. Do not take two spear for engines at the same time. 
Jesus. Is this room before or after I gave him the jewels? Uh, it's from after. Okay. All right. Back through the passageway that leads to the cove. I don't know if the spear for engines are still going to be there. Probably. But it looked like there was nothing really in the cove, so I think I should just avoid it. Let's, yeah, let's just not even go close. And there's the wonder somewhere. Oh, 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 what, what is that? Something just aggroed, and then I also hear a really nasty sound that sounds sort of like a Lagoy. I don't hear it anymore. But what just aggroed? I hear something faintly. Oh yeah, definitely. Here's something. Are you aggroed on me? <gasps> yes! Dear God, that looks incredibly cool and terrifying. So far it seems like there's one of each color, so if I kill it, like, is that the only one? Um, I don't know, but let's try. It's attacking me. They look like they have incredible, like, AoE when they explode, but so far they haven't actually hurt me. Take a hell of a lot of damage, that's for sure. Oh! I did it! A blue logos diminished. I still hear that creepy ass noise, though. The Wheel of Living Flame, a commandment of the westernmost king's highest law, an utterance of fire and glory. This Logos was of the order of perfection, appointed to extinguish errors of vitality. The anti-deceased are their prey. It is not dead, only diminished. It will rekindle in time, at which point it would be advisable to be far away. Ah, okay, so yeah, they do come back. Well, either gain fuel or celebrate my victory. Reduce tear. I could definitely use tear reduction. I'm at 49%. You've triumphed over a prince of heaven. From 49% to... Jeez, only 10%. The blue kingdom is brutal with tear. A stoker brings out his fiddle. A signaler her flute. The galley is raided. The bridge becomes an east end pub for an evening and several of your crew get blind drunk. The laughter is queasy with the dissipation of terror. And yeah, here's a... The five quarters, she's like a blue palace. Right next to the blue logos. So they have... 
they each have their own like palace and I don't know maybe that's where they'll return when they come back return to the palace whence they came oh I was gonna go check out this area here but actually this whole thing is the cove isn't it yeah screw that Let's go towards this amazing looking wonder over here. I saw it while I was fighting that thing. The movements of Horologian dictate the rituals and observances of the Blue Kingdom. Horologian. The thing is beautiful. Symbols of correspondence, I think, all around it. The Great Dial, Horologian, is in motion. It's the clock of the Blue Kingdom, dictating the hours of the observances, rituals which govern the progress of the spirit towards death's door. Beneath its face, thousands of spirits labor to power its revolution. Above, greater spirits of orate majesty preside over the regular observances. It is both a symbol and vital function of the bureaucracy of the dead. Thousands of spirits labor to power its revolution. Depart or approach. Yeah, let's approach. The observances are mandatory for spirits at Horologian. There's an observance for every status, and once begun, may not be escaped. Yeah, let's do it. Your engine lands at the appointed place in the shadow of the... Gnomon? I remember I looked up that word before. It had something to do with a sundial? Uh, hold on. Yeah, it's pronounced Gnomon. It's the projecting piece on a sundial that shows the time by the position of its shadow. All right, ministers with crowns of molten gold turn to you as you disembark. An observance is about to begin. Every spirit has its place during the hours chimed by Horologian. You're about to be shown yours. Observe the ephemera. You're not permitted to participate, but you may watch. At this hour, the ephemera are invited to a banquet. Shades lead you below the face of Horologian and into a cavern under the dial. A great table carved from the jaw of an eater of the dead stands at its center. Thousands of spirits and masks sit on long benches to either side. Shades bearing tapers carry platters of petrichor, the color of sweet milk. The only sound in all the chambers is the scraping of wooden spoon on bowl. Eventually the spirits stand and, as one, file out. The petrichor remains on the table. Depart. Shafts of light flung from death's door illuminate the face of Horologian in a brief corona of dazzling gold. For a moment your engine is washed in a terrible radiance. Then you are away, and the dial is behind you. I wonder what would happen if it was the uh, observance for the anti-deceased. You know, something that I wouldn't just observe, but would actually take part in. I hear something. Oh, hold on. I see something. Somewhere I can dock. What is this? Unsettled dreams. See, company. 41% chance of success. Failure. Judging by the noise, I'm going to guess this is the... F I was going to say the Forge of Souls. The Shadow of the Sun. Thriving flower beds, statues, obsessively trimmed grass, an ornamental lake shining and perfectly circular like a dropped shilling. These surround the glittering palace called the Shadow of the Sun. 
Huh. I don't think I've heard of this place before. The Shadow of the Sun is a meticulously kept garden palace sitting at the center of miles of spirit-churned mud. The gardens are vast, ornate, resplendent. The flowers have been grown in exquisite regiments. As you follow the pale gravel path, you notice a yoked spirit carefully and individually measuring each blade of grass. <laughs> Whoa. At the center of it all sits the palace where the sun's daughter dwells, colossal, gleaming, its walls cascading with lilies. Let's write a port report. You spot a bench beneath a willow tree beside a mere smooth lake. A place to sit, take out your notebook, and jot some observations. A report on death's door? Is, is this death's door? When you write your report on death's door, it is difficult to avoid slipping into philosophy. What does it all mean? Is this all there is? After a few attempts, you find more luck in writing about the spirits of the dead as baldly and bluntly as though they are imported cabbages. Shades arrive in ever greater numbers. The Blue Kingdom finds it difficult to meet demand. You've heard rumors that there are even disguised members of the living among the influx of spirits, trying to slip through the door while alive. Outside the shadow of the sun, a rising chaos is barely contained. Yeah, so this is Death's Door? Question mark? Seek an audience with the Arbiter. She's the Arbiter of Fates, the daughter of the Sapphire King. The Shadow of the Sun was built for her and around her. Yeah. As you approach the palace, a pair of yoked spirits bar your way. Only the yoked are permitted an audience with the Arbiter of Fates, says one of the spirits, his voice emanating from the jar in his hands. We cannot help you. Be on your way. Visit the Garden of Unflowers. The center of the ornamental lake is a garden island where unfinished stories are planted and fed. A rowboat sits at the lake's edge, occupied by a yoked spirit with an oar at the ready. It doesn't take long for him to row you across the placid water. Any conversation is decidedly one-sided. The Unflowers have petals of parchment. Their stems are tightly wound scrolls. The island is filled with them, but they're not allowed to grow as they please. Instead, they're cultivated in meticulous patterns. A yoked spirit tends to the island, pruning and studying the unflowers with infinite diligence. She is known as the Gardener Archivist. She greets you at the dock, hand raised in silent greeting. Huh. Ask about the unflowers. What are they? Grown from unflourished seeds. When the dead pass through the... The cataf... Catafalque? Yeah, it's catafalque. It means a decorated wooden framework supporting the coffin of a distinguished person during a funeral or while lying in state. When the dead pass through the catafalque, we extract their unfinished stories. Spirits afflicted by unfinished stories are bitter, detestable things. The gardener archivist keeps her voice in an empty flower pot. It echoes dolefully. At first, we did not know what to do with our harvest. We could not destroy them. Then they would remain unfinished forever. We found that we could plant them, and unflowers would grow from the seed. The stories remain unfinished, but at least now they're pleasing to the eye. Oh. <laughs> I, hmm, I thought that would have a better uh, end result, but they still remain unfinished, but they're pleasing to the eye. Okay. Ask the gardener archivist what's wrong. She's fidgeting with her robes. She looks like she's working up the courage to ask for a favor. It takes her a moment to work up the courage to unburden herself. Every decade, I'm ordered to raise the unflowers and plant anew, she says finally, even though it leaves their stories unfinished forever. It's a matter of space, you see. We don't have room for them all. That time's approaching again. 
the ending of the unended. Before that day, can you help me finish as many of these stories as we can? So you can finish the stories? You just like finish writing them? Like you just write an end to them? Uh, but yeah, I'll definitely help. Agree to help her. She bows her head in a mixture of gratitude and relief. I can't tell you how thankful I am. The gardener archivist pauses to collect herself. With a magnifying glass and a mirror and a great degree of care, I can read the beginning of an unflower story without causing it to wilt. I'll select one for you that I think can be ended without too much trouble. Come back when you're ready to begin. Oh, that's so cool. Magnifying glass and a mirror and care. I can read the beginning of the story without causing it to wilt. It's so cool. Offer to conclude one of the unflower stories. She hands you a flower pot. It contains an unflower, a huge and delicate papyrus blossom sprouting from ink black soil. Don't read it until you arrive at your destination, cautions the gardener archivist, or it'll decay into nothing. You must take this to the Eagle's Empyrean in Eleutheria, says the gardener archivist. Once there, read the unflower. You'll know what to do. Huh. Okay. Take it. All stories can be ended if the right character comes along. The unflower shrinks from your touch. With one swift motion, you pluck it from the pale soil. So I can pick an unflower and read it before it wilts, but that sounds really fucked up. Right? Because then it has no chance of having an end to the story. And I might cause a soul to forever be bitter. Like, no. Hell no. Mm -mm, I'm not doing that. So that's all I can do here right now. I don't know what it is with this thing being, like, when I did the port report, I talked about Death's Door, but nothing else mentions Death's Door. And the place where Death's Door is is where I need to go to find the industrialist's wife and see if they're still here. So either this isn't really the place to do that, or I need audience with the Arbiter to do that. Alright, something sounds like a great... Whoa, wrong way. Something sounds like a great flame over here. I want to see it. What am I hearing? Not sure if that's gunfire or monster sounds. Is that Death's Door? The big, just black void? Or is that a perfectly clear lake? There's a bright light coming from up there. I'll check that out in a second. Oh! Yeah, so this was just uh, a platform. This is like the full... the full place. Maybe that's Death's Door over there then. Yeah, that's about all there is there. Alright, let's go towards the source of that light. I think it's going to be off the map, though, but still. <laughs> My god. Yeah, it is off the map. But what happens when I go off the map in the Blue Kingdom? <laughs> <laughs> 